Welcome to the Security Speakeasy Show, where we talk about all things network security. My name is Alex, and I'm from the product marketing team here at Palo Alto Networks. Today, we are going to talk about smart NICs, smart network interface cards. This is a topic that is really starting to gain traction in the industry, especially in the service provider and hyperscale data center world. And in particular today, we're going to talk about how smart NICs can be used to better improve security. The good news is that we've found just the right person to talk to about this. Joining me is Susant Kondapaneni one of our software firewall product managers. Sasant, welcome to the show. Can you just give everybody a a brief description of what you do here at Palo Alto Networks? Thanks, Alex. I'm a product line manager in the software firewalls team. Our team manages VM series, which is virtualized next generation firewall, as well as CN series, which is a container security network solution. Let's start with the basics, Sasan. When it comes to smart NICs, the first thing I think most people need to understand is what is a hyperscale data center, right? I mentioned it before. It's kind of a weird term, right? Hyperscale, what exactly does that mean? Um, So could you give us a brief explanation of what a hyperscale data center is and what types of organizations are building these types of data centers? Sure, Alex. So in computer terminology, scaling means a system that is built to adapt the resource availability based on the application needs. And hyper, as you know, means extreme or in excess. So the term hyperscale means a system that is built to scale massively and more importantly, very quickly. So there are three types of customers who are actually building uh, hyperscale data centers. The first one are cloud providers. Uh, These are customers like AWS, Azure, GCP, Oracle. And this could also be web scale companies like Facebook and Apple, right? The second set of customers are uh, telco service providers or internet service providers. These are AT&Ts of the world or the Verizons of the world, or this could be Comcast or Dish Networks of the world. The third set of customers are managed service providers who are building these massive data centers and are renting them out to large corporations. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so it's not just a fancy term. We are literally talking about just enormous, massive scale data centers that these companies are building and running. And I imagine with that level of scalability, um, and frankly, I mean, I know this from my VMware days even, right? Like that level of scalability, that level of size has to come with some sort of unique security challenges. Can you tell us a little bit about what some of the unique challenges are that uh, these organizations that are building these hyperscale data centers face? Hyperscale data centers, as you can imagine, hold a ton of personal information as well as sensitive financial information. So securing the information flow out of these data centers is top of mind for their operators. In order to understand the challenge that they face in securing their traffic, we need to understand two unique factors uh, that apply to hyperscale data centers. The first one is the amount of traffic that is coming into or going out of these hyperscale data centers is massive. We are talking of hundreds of GBPS or even terabits per second. The second important factor is not all of this traffic can be inspected or needs to be inspected. Let me give you examples of what I mean. If you take out your phone and you browse to facebook.com, your request gets encrypted by your phone in a way such that only Facebook can decrypt it and understand the request. But this data flows to your service provider's data centers. And even though, you, even if your service provider wants to decrypt it and inspect it for any text, they cannot do that because they don't have the keys that only you and Facebook hold. What this means is, even if they want to, they cannot inspect this traffic. The second example is that uh, it's, it's a known fact that most of the internet traffic is streaming or encrypted. And if it's streaming traffic, uh, there is no value that a firewall can provide in inspecting every packet of that particular streaming flow, right? 
So if you combine these two factors, one, there's massive amount of traffic flowing in and out of these hyperscale data centers, and two, only a minor portion of the traffic really holds threats and needs to be inspected. With these two factors in mind, now you understand the challenge uh, much better. In order to inspect this large flows of traffic, the customers have to deploy these huge iron firewalls, but a major portion of the resources within the firewall are going to waste because they're being expended on the traffic that really don't need inspection or cannot be inspected. This adds to a lot of uh, operational as well as capital expense to the customer and the value that they're able to derive out of it is not proportional to the investment that they need to make. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, right? Especially when you start talking about service providers who you know, really need to maximize, uh, or I should say minimize their OPEX and maximize their throughput, right? For service providers, it's all about building the most resilient, high-speed network and secure network, ideally, that they possibly can at the least amount of cost to them, right? That's essentially what their margin is based on. So it, it would make sense. And it, it is crazy to think that there is so much traffic traversing those, those networks that it doesn't really make any sense to inspect, but they are forced to deploy these massive firewalls uh, in order to accommodate that traffic, just to inspect the 20% that, that really does warrant security inspection. And that will keep both their internal environment safe, as well as, of course, their customers and, you know, uh, traffic and data safe. So what are smart mix? What are these network interface cards? Why are they important in these hyperscale data centers? Right. So NIC really stands for network interface card. It's a PCIe adapter that goes into a server and provides Ethernet connectivity. But a smart NIC goes beyond a simple connectivity. And it has the smartness to offload some of the network processing, which is otherwise done by the host processor. Incidentally, smart makes evolved out of the needs of uh, hyperscalers. As these hyperscalers move from uh, purpose-built hardware for delivering network functions to a more software-delivered model, they needed to optimize their software so that they're able to meet the capacity and throughput needs that these hyperscalers have. And that's where they started leveraging smart mix to offload some of the CPU intens intensive functionality so that the software delivered network function is able to meet the capacity and scale requirements of the hyperscalers. Yeah, that's super interesting, right? That, and it makes a lot of sense. So this is a security show after all, right? So I want to tie it back into security. And I want to ask you, you know, how can smart mix be used to help with the security challenges that we were talking about a minute ago? So glad you asked this question, Alex. Yes, firewalls can leverage smart mix by offloading some of the CPU intensive functionality to them. We are working with some of the leading smart mix vendors to define an open API interface so that any firewall can generically offload some of their CPU intensive operations to the smart link. In fact, in our next panel is release 10.1, we are launching one such functionality called intelligent traffic offload. This feature allows VM series performance to grow by five times. The way this feature works is VM series inspects the first few packets of every flow and makes a decision on A, whether it can really inspect this flow and B, is there value in inspecting further packets of this flow? If the answer to either of them is no, then VM series would inspect the smart name to forward the, any further packets of the flow directly to its destination. This way, VM series is focusing its resources only on those flows that really can be inspected and need inspection. Yeah, that makes total sense, right? So, so really what's happening here is and especially in, in service provider environments where they are really adopting virtualization, right? So they're virtualizing as much of their infrastructure as, as they can to sort of embody that software-defined data center mentality. Well, now they can virtualize their security appliances as well as part of that without the fear of bringing the network to a halt, right? Because of limited performance. 
So it makes total sense, right? This seems like a really good combination for anybody out there who's looking for that blend of virtualization and performance at scale, or I should say at hyperscale. Is that fair to say? I mean, that seems like what, what we're really delivering on here. You're exactly right. That's exactly what we're trying to do. Help these hyperscalers find those needles in these haystacks. Awesome. Well, listen, Susan, this has been fantastic. It's been really informative. Definitely appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Uh, and anybody out there who's listening, if you would like to learn more about the new intelligent traffic offload service that's coming with the PanOS 10.1 release, uh, be sure to visit www.paloaltonetworks.com for more information. If you enjoyed this show, please like and subscribe. And of course, feel free to leave a comment. See you in the next episode.